Hey, it's Tom from the Kavona team here, looking at a quick procedural way to add uh, dirt and corrosion maps onto an object without the need to uh, create a UV map and paint them on. I have an interactive render on the go with two objects. You can see the effects here. Let me just set up a render region and uh, we'll move this over here and we'll start to take a look at how I got this set up. The scene itself is quite simple, a free object from coronamaterials.com, a third-party site with free materials on it, and uh, an HDRI from Peter Guthrie, free sky map. And uh, what I have is a kind of coppery type material and a kind of corroded copper type material that's green, and they are fed into a blend, and Corona AO is used as a mask. You may be familiar with Corona AO, the ambient occlusion, uh, as a separate fender pass, which is used to add faked shadows into a scene, uh, or sometimes just to make very uh, dark, faint shadows at the edge of uh, geometry to uh, pick out and highlight where geometry is changing. But you can use it as an active part of your renders by using it as a mask as here. Let me just show you the settings for that. Um, these three work in uh, concert to give you the final result. The way ambient occlusion works is by firing out a ray from the surface to find out if there were other surfaces nearby. If there are, then it's occluded, and if there are not, then it's not occluded. Uh, the max distance then obviously controls how far a ray travels to find out if there were other surfaces nearby. At a high setting, you can see the ones Firing up into the sky are finding no object, but the ones here are actually contacting the grand plane, perhaps a long way away, but they are finding it. Uh, it's not the effect I want to achieve in this particular case, so I'm going to narrow that down so that the rays don't travel very far to look for a point of contact. The color spread then uh, controls how far that effect spreads out. At a low value, it disappears totally. Uh, and as you can see, it's not spreading very far, so we get a very limited effect. Uh, I'm going to set that back to 1. Then our ray directionality is um, rather like the difference between an omni light and a spotlight. At low values, it's like an omni light. Those searching rays spread out in a, in a wide pattern looking for nearby surfaces, and that gives you a more pronounced effect. Uh, but in this case, because I want to narrow it into the corners, I want to create a more focused effect, more like a spotlight, where the searching rays are much more closely adhering to the uh, surface normal. So by adjusting these parameters, you'll be able to control just how much of the effect appears and where at on your object. The next parameter here, max samples, that controls the quality. Higher samples mean higher quality. In the case uh, of uh, using it as a noise map, sometimes the noise is actually useful. It adds uh, imperfections into the result, and that can be handy. But it depends on what effect you're looking for. Invert normals will reverse the effect. So if I select that, you'll see that whereas the inward-facing corners were previously being occluded, now the outward facing corners are being occluded. Um, you'll probably need to uh, significantly adjust your settings to uh, get uh, an effective look for this, but again it does give you uh, the opportunity to create worn edges where an object may have rubbed against another where it's likely to have lost its shine. Let me switch back to uh, this effect. I'll readjust my settings for that. Now, the set then here for excludes is uh, interesting, gives you a lot of control. You'll note that here the uh, copper object is detecting a nearby surface in the ground plane and is counting as occluded. If I switch that to only the same object occludes, because it's finding a surface but it belongs to a different object, occlusion no longer happens. Uh, because of the way this object is built, this large base is separate from uh, this part of the base, and since they're separate objects, again, no occlusion occurs. You can reverse that with only other objects occlude. 
That can be handy if you have two different types of metals that may corrode while they're in contact with each other, um, but don't corrode otherwise. And if I wanted this effect, but did not want it to happen here where it contacts the ground plane, uh, I could use the exclude list, and all I'd need to do is add the ground plane into the exclude list, and I'd be able to get that effect. Lastly, you can adjust the uh, direction offsets for the surface normal, which could be useful for simulating uh, leaking water of a similar if you want the effects to happen in a downward direction more than an upward direction in terms of the world space. And, and that's it. It's uh, quick and easy. You can, of course, uh, add multiple blends. You could add noise into the AO mask. You could add noise into this result here. You can control the strength of the effect with the occluded color. Closer to black, then the more prominent it is, uh, the closer to white, then the more transparent it is, even when occluded. So that gives you another range of parameters you can adjust to get exactly the effect that you want. Uh, my setup is very simple, but I hope it's given you some ideas and inspiration. Thank you.